All right, it's 6 o'clock. We'll get started on this Sunday evening. It's good to see our folks who are with us. And uh, you guys know the drill. It's always good to see you who have joined us online. If you've got a prayer request, please take one of these uh, opportunities via text or via email to send us a, a request, and we would be more than happy to make sure that uh, we get that in to Brother Scott before he comes for that time of prayer. Well, let's get started singing tonight. We're going to start out with uh, I'll Fly Away. Oh, no. 
some retirement people come out of retirement. Let's sing Sweet Beulah Land.
Come on and give us announcements. Good evening. We have such a wonderful church. You always surprise me and thrill me. At the beginning of every service, I always say to myself, is there anybody going to be here? And I get up to make announcements, and they're all here. It's just real. <laughs> so it's good to see everybody in the Lord's house tonight. We'd like to welcome everyone. You folks watching online, we thank you for joining in with us. And, uh, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. Just a few announcements that we have that we mentioned this morning. And then uh, we'll go through our prayer list very quickly. And uh, then uh, we'll have a word of prayer. Um, seniors this Friday the 26th this Friday at 11 o'clock we'll be eating here at the church so please remember that if you want to be part of it please uh, call me and let me know send me an email or send me a text or something and let me know as soon as possible just so we'll know how much food that we need to prepare um, Saturday evening on the 27th is our uh, annual wild game uh, men of iron wild game dinner so all men please remember that bring somebody with you and uh, I know we will have a wonderful time. Mimi Murray and <clears throat> Peyton Rouse would be interested if you have a high school or college graduate that you would speak with them and get information to them regarding uh, the uh, information that they need. Well, uh, and they, they can go over all that with you, so please remember that. Um, Vacation Bible School. Uh, Heather, how are we doing on volunteers we halfway there three quarters of the way there all the way there or just barely there a little over barely we're, we're blowing by barely and getting to almost so let's let's keep it going if you can be part of bible school please let us know we need workers and teachers and assistant teachers and folks to serve food and folks to pop popcorn and folks to do uh, crafts and folks to do games and all that kind of stuff so we need everybody and if you can come and help uh, even if you're working, there's may be able to help one or two evenings or two or three evenings. Please let Heather know, and we'll be glad to get you uh, plugged in there to help us with that. Um, Easter service two weeks from two weeks from today, and uh, Easter Sunday evening we'll have no services. So please remember that as well. And um, just to get, keep in the back of your mind, uh, shoebox ministry. We're always in need of dollars to help support uh, or help send boxes, and we have. Uh, our goal this year is 400, so that comes out to $4,000. And uh, so, if you can help us there, that would be great. And uh, <clears throat> if you and if you want to give or purchase something or help purchase something, please see Tracy, and she can tell you what we are in need of. Are there any desperate needs right now, Tracy, that we have? Not desperate, we need grace. Okay. We need Do what? We need what size is anything for boys? Come see Tracy and she'll tell you what size boy shirts she needs. But we are in need of boy shirts. So we're right now it's boy shirts and everybody's doing a great job. So we certainly appreciate that. Um, prayer request. Uh, Debbie Parker uh, doing much better uh, as far as information she received this week. Uh, that her cancer, they believe her cancer is in remission. Uh, but... Uh, um, the chemo drugs, if you know anything about chemo, chemo typically will wipe out your white blood cell count, and it has absolutely wiped hers to near nothing. And uh, when you don't have a white blood cell count, then you are extremely high risk for an infection to do really ugly things to you. And so um, when I talked with the last conversation, the text I had with Debbie, uh, they're going to decrease. They're able to, they're possibly because she's in remission, they may be able to decrease her chemo drug, which may in reverse help her white blood cell count come up, which would help her tremendously. Uh, John Barker, Gene Carrier, Vicki Widener, Rick Hicks, uh, Noah Brown, Randall Sargent, Josh Fuller, this is uh, Gloria's nephew. He was diagnosed with cancer this week, and uh, so be much in prayer for him. They believe that they can take care of it, but uh, uh, keep him in your prayers. Ray Stowers, Hunter Wright, Dougie Gross, uh, this is... Um, Dougie is Tammy Sheehan's uh, aunt who had a really severe stroke this week, so be much in prayer for her. Larry Stam, uh, Larry Stam, uh, we help support him. He has uh, some opportunities to, um, through some folks he met through WHCB, uh, to begin to do some uh, radio, one minute radio um, uh, blurbs uh, that he had, had been doing on uh, CQR here locally, but I think CQR 
locally was one one minute blurb a week, and Southwest uh, Southwest Bible class or whatever the name of it is, it's um, on WHCB. They're wanting him to do a minute program or a minute blurb for every day of the week. So he is going from there to, and that that'll be great. And they'll get it almost nationally, and then it's going to get, and they're going to open up some opportunities for Larry to begin to speak at some conferences. So just pray for him that he'll uh, figure out balance and how to do that and uh, keep everything the way it ought to be. Uh, April Osborne, uh, Daryl put her on the prayer list this morning. Her um, her 19 year old son passed away, so we'll be much in prayer for her. Jeff Rasnick, um, Aiden Robinson, Ann Patrick, Bessie would be family, Bill Bunton, Bobby Burgess, uh, Chris Epperson, Jimmy Church, Sheila Murray, uh, Becky Lewis's family in the passing of her father, David and Jan Dorsey, Tony and Kelsey Silvers, Teresa King, Danny Sheehan, Ron Carrier, Scott Ledford, uh, as we will be um, at the in the April business meeting, I believe, voting on him for deacon, correct? And... Um, Jackson Jones and Joyce Cox. Are there others that we need to add? Yes, ma'am. John Beckner. Okay. John Beckner. You say Jonathan Price. Okay. And Jonathan Price. others tonight. All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, Jerry, I'll ask you tonight, if you will, to lead us in prayer, please, sir. Guys, come ahead. my 
chapter 11 again tonight we uh, as we were practicing this evening y'all have to know we have gone from singing when we desire to singing when we think we can still hit the notes <laughs> uh, there is a song that we practiced back in the spring and uh, one with greater vision that greater vision sings it, and uh, I don't think we've sung it yet because there's notes I still can't hit. Thought I could, but I can't. And uh, Jimmy was talking this this afternoon when we were practicing. He said, "If we keep doing this, he said we're going to figure out a way to lower these songs." And uh, so that is the joy of when you do parts of being the the boring baritone. That's the good part to have because it's that part that nobody can really hear unless it's not there. And then you go, something's missing. But when the baritone is singing, you don't ever hear it. So uh, when I sang in a quartet down in, in Georgia at our church, uh, we had our music minister, he sang high tenor and, and uh, all these. He would, we would sing seven or eight songs. And he'd go, man, this is killing me. I said, I don't have a problem because I was singing baritone again. And that was, that was pretty good. So uh, I will say that we, we sang at the, uh, sometimes you, we, you get off key and we, we were singing, uh, we about every about once a month, once every six weeks, we went to the Walker County Correctional Institute on a Sunday morning, and our quartet would sing, and uh, I would bring a message, and and then we would be back in time for our services. And um, there was um, four, obviously four of us, and there was our bass and our lead singer uh, Tracy. Terry was our bass bass singer. Brent was our tenor, and me and Tracy always stood beside each other, and we were singing. The last song we were going to sing was. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus, a cappella. And we got our note, uh, the lady that was playing, she gave us our note, and we started singing, and I was off key. <clears throat> and they were all on it, and I was off of it, and I was searching for my note. I knew my note would sing it a million times. I was looking for it. I was moving up and down, and Tracy just reaches over and takes me by the hand, and he squeezes me real hard. So I just lip-synced from that point forward. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was, uh, I really enjoyed it, but it was, uh, sometimes it happens. Romans chapter 11, we're going to look at a little bit more of this tonight. And uh, we looked at some verses, we want to look at a lot of uh, some verses I wanted to look at this morning and did not, we're going to look at this evening. And the Lord, the Lord says, my glory I will not share with another. There are all these that are struggling, not struggling, but striving 
to take away God's glory. God will never share His glory. Every time when Eve bit of the fruit in the garden and Adam followed suit, before that when Satan stated, I will arise and be like the Most High, and he and a third of the angels in heaven were cast out because they, they cast their lot in with him. Man will falter in the desire to elevate himself above our Heavenly Father. Always. Even though man may try to diminish his glory, <clears throat> his glory is never diminished. Oh, it may be, be diminished in the eyes of, of humans because their rebelliousness, sometimes because of the way God's children act. Uh, we diminish His glory uh, in, on this earth. But His intrinsic glory that is His, that we looked at this morning in Exodus thirty three twenty two, when He said, um, when um, Moses desired to see Him, and He said, you cannot handle my glory. This is, this is glory. That is the glory of God that will never diminish. And that is His intrinsic glory. That is His glory. That is the Shekinah glory. This is glory that will not diminish. We cannot take that... Now, the way men worship Him and the way men think of Him, they can diminish His glory in the eyes of those on the earth, but His glory truly is never diminished. And that's something that we have to, we have to understand. And we, we so often in our hurried life, do not just sit down and gaze upon our Savior and gaze upon our Heavenly Father and think about the things He has done not only for the entire world but for us as individuals. As we talked about this morning, the greatest miracle that can ever be performed is bringing the dead to life and that is what happens every time someone comes to Jesus Christ as Savior. The dead come to life. It is, it is a miracle of outstanding spiritual proportions because it is, a, it is a miracle that only God can do and no one else. Um, there are things that we can do. There are things that we can be involved in. We can be involved in salvation as far as giving the message and scattering the seed. But to make that seed effective in the hearts and lives of unbelievers, that is the work of the Holy Spirit and His alone. That's, that's why we request. We, we know there's people on our prayer list that are sick. And we know that unless God touches their body in some way, they may not be healed. And we, we know it's God's doing. If healing comes and however He chooses to heal a person, we know that healing, when men say, we don't know, we're not sure, we know that healing comes from God through the use of medicine, through the use of, of modern means, or through the use of what we would call, or God does just as what we would call it, a, mir a, tr a true miracle that we would look at it that way. <clears throat> but to sit and see Him in all of His glory and think of all the things that He has done for us personally, we think of our health, we think of our ability to uh, secure work, we think of our ability to... Uh, make a, to make a living, to secure a job, to earn a wage and to take it home and to pay for it and take care of our families and to help take care of our families and to put a roof over our heads and food in our bellies and clothes on our back and a car to drive in and a little bit of money in our pocket to, to spend with as we please and the money that He gives us that we can give back to the church to have it put into His work and to see the, the community and the world affected by the gospel through the giving that you do uh, each and every week. That is an absolute miracle of God and it reveals His glory. Every time you see a letter from one of our missionaries that talks about people coming to Christ in their mission work, that is revealing God's glory. That is revealing who He is. That is revealing His ability and His power to overpower the spirit of man and draw Him to Himself and miraculously and gloriously save Him. This is a revelation of who God is. And, and so often, some, we, we, we think sometimes, just as on earth, what we do is we diminish His glory by making a God and creating a God in our own mind who is much like we are. And we understand, as we talked about this morning, 
as you look in these verses uh, in 34 and 35, God says, Who has known the mind of the Lord? This is a, 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 a moving of, of Isaiah to hear, right? My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who in our finiteness has been... Listen, the angels in heaven do not even know the mind of God. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit know the mind of God. Nobody else does. We... We know His commands. We know some of His mind. We know some of His thoughts. We know some of His ways because of what He has revealed to us in Scripture. Nobody can look at God and go, I know what you're thinking. It's not possible because we don't. And how we would navigate through something is not how He would navigate through something. Paul talks later in the book of Romans about responding to those who um, are less than kind. He says, respond to your enemies in love and in so doing you heap coals of fire upon their head. That goes so against our nature. When someone wrongs you, your first desire is what? Vengeance. To seek revenge. To wait for the opportunity. Sometimes it's immediate. Sometimes it's like, well, we'll wait for the opportunity. We'll wait for the right chance. We'll, We'll wait for the right time. And then we're going to get back at them. They they say that the reason that Nero fiddled, lost his mind and fiddled while Rome burned was because... He heard as Christians were being put to death in the Colosseums, he heard Christians singing hymns to God. That's not your natural response. But that's God's desire for His children to have that kind of response. Why? Because His name is glorified. But to to show your glory through the death of your children is how can we how can we conceive that? Who hath been his counselor? Who has God sought out for advice? Christ never sat down with his disciples and said, Hey boys, what do you think we ought to do here? He had a plan. He'd already thought it out. He'd already been put in place. There was never a wavering from the plan. He never said, now guys, this is what's going to happen. Do you think this is the best way? Or have you talked with the folks in the community and think there might be a better way to do what we're thinking about? No. There's no one who can give... Counsel. We sing the song, Who hath given counsel to the Lord? No one. No one. At any time, in eternity past or eternity future, will God ever look to anybody and say, What do you think? Think this is the right way? He had it all figured out before it started. The Ten Commandments were in place before Genesis 1-1 was written or before Genesis 1-1 came into being and came into action. Exodus was written. The Ten Commandments were in place. The death of Christ was in place. The rebellion of Israel was in place. The resurrection was in place. The twelve who were going to be chosen were in place. It was all there, all ready to go. God didn't sit down and, and He's not on a daily basis seeking what he needs to be doing. He doesn't have a 10-year plan and a 20-year plan and a 30-year plan and he's he's going to have to readjust or adjust the 20-year plan after the 10 years is up because things happen in the 10 years that God wasn't aware of. No, God has got it all under control. We think about that and we're like, Scott, I know that. But does it wow us and does it thrill us to the soles of our feet and the depths of our heart to know that our God, 
And our Savior and the one who has control of our lives and keeps us needs no help from anybody for anything. He does not need our efforts. He does not need our skills and abilities. He does not need our brilliance that He has given to us. He does not need a genius. He doesn't need a Mensa society inside the kingdom of God so He can get this taken care of. No. No one has that skill set. He doesn't need it anyway. Look, if you will, please, just some verses. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 22. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 22. When we talked about this this morning, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, we see his glories through his we see his glory and his power through his miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. He talks about those who rejected going into the promised land. They had already seen through his power and through his abilities to get them out of the land of Egypt, they had already seen some of his miracles in the wilderness, but yet they still rejected his direction. His glory is a point of trust in the lives of his children. Because through his glory works his power. His glory revealed is, is, is revealed in his power. His glory is revealed in the fact that His power is revealed in that this world has not already gone to pot. It has not already gone the way that it's going. It's not already there. It's God's power to restrain and withhold by His people and the work of the Spirit. That is a revelation of God's power. And this brings to Him glory in the eyes of His children, in the eyes of those who worship and serve Him. It brings more awe. Psalms chapter 3 and verse 3. We see this. And as I looked these up this week, I could have I, I could have read verses that went, we could have read verses for two or three hours. And just read verses. Psalm 3 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of mine head. For those who follow him, David says, you know, when we look at this, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, you're my shield for me. You are my glory and the lifter up of mine head. The psalmist here which is David, understands that all that he has and all that he is and all that he will ever be and everything that comes to him comes from God, whether it be the throne or the killing of a lion or a bear or the slaying of Goliath, whatever it might be, everything about him and through him comes from God. Nothing comes from himself. It all comes from God. What did he say when he faced, when Saul uh, had him in... He was ready to face, or getting ready to face Goliath. And Saul, and Saul said, what qualifies you? And David said, God gave me the lion, and God gave me the bear. David took no credit for the death of those two. He said, God gave me the bear, God gave me the lion, and then what's the next words out of his mouth? God will give me the victory over this uncircumcised Philistine. the revelation of His power, His glory, and the revelation of what He does and how He delivers us in our life, God's glory is revealed. Psalm 62 and verse 7. Psalm 62 and verse 7. He says the same thing. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. 
We see him in this. Turn with you please to Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 8. Isaiah chapter 42. I thought we were going to do a Bible drill this morning. Isaiah 42 and verse 8. And this is what we refer to. I am the Lord. <clears throat> Capital L-O-R-D. I am Jehovah. I am King of kings and Lord of lords. I am the creator of this universe. I am the one who puts it all in place. I am the one who holds it all together. It is by my power. I am the Lord. That is my name. Do not forget who I am. I am not some God. I am not one of the gods. I am the only God. Don't forget it. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. This is a great verse to use when someone says all religions lead to the same place. No, I'm afraid they don't. Nirvana and utopia are not heaven. Islam will not get you there. Buddhism and Confucianism, you don't come back in in Hinduism and you don't reincarnate enough times till you can reach perfection and reach... No, one road leads to heaven. There is one God, one heaven, one Lord, one creator of all, one creator of salvation, one giver of life, and it is God and Him alone. And He says, I will not give my glory to no one else. I will not share it. Not even an inkling will I share. It is all mine. It culminates in Revelation. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we go on over in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 19. Just a few chapters over. Isaiah 66 and verse 19. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish, Paul, and Lud, to draw the boat of Tubal and to Javan, the isles afar off, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Missionaries being sent in the Old Testament. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, Paul, and Lud, that draw the bow, to Tubal, and Javan, to the isles afar off, that have not seen, have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Is this not what we do? There is only one glory we can declare. There's only one glory that we can boast of. There's only one glory for which we can brag. There's only one name by which we can lift up. It's, it's not our name because if, yes, we are moving as, as a child of God, we are moving in the process of sanctification. We're moving in, in a place where sin does not control us as it once did as sinners. We are moving there with the aid and the help and the assistance and the strength of the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to overcome sin and to slay it. We don't do it perfectly. We don't, if, and if we begin to tell people to look at our lives and to watch me, they're going to watch us until we fail and we're going to fail. And it's probably not going to take that long for us to mess up to a point that they're going to say, I'm done with this. You do not live what you say. As we see that we live in a world today that one slip of the tongue 50 years ago can eliminate you from any part of public life at all. You can apologize, you can say whatever you want to say, you can weep, you can write letters, you can stand before the world and apologize, you can give money to a cause, whatever it does, they will eliminate you and that's what the world does when you put their eyes on you. And what you do is you put their eyes 
on a Savior and a God who loves them with a love that they do not deserve, who offers them a forgiveness that they cannot earn, and who will give to them a salvation that is the only way that takes them to heaven and makes them right with Him. He says, I have sent them to talk about my glory. To tell someone who is broken hearted, who has been jilted, or one whose parents have abandoned, or a spouse has left them, and they feel unloved, and we can point them to one who will love them regardless. We can take the one who thinks they are the everything to everybody, and when the world comes crashing down around them, we can point them to somebody who loves them regardless. We can point them to one who gave His Son and His glory is revealed on Calvary's cross when Christ hangs there and He says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. It is finished. It is done. It is over. And He says, They will go to those who have not seen My glory and they shall declare My glory among the Gentiles. What is it that Rahab told the spies in Jericho? You remember Jericho, the first battle in the promised land? They go to spy out the city and they're there. And what does Rahab tell them? We've heard about y'all. We've heard about your God. And we're afraid. We're afraid. What had they heard about? They had heard about His acts and they had heard about His power. And His glory was revealed to them through this awesome power that you think about even in that one small situation in the time, in the, in the, in the, in the, the frame of time of, this, of, of history, that one moment that when, when Jer- Jericho collapses and a red thread hanging from a window saves an entire family and the house stays intact. That's God's power. That reveals His glory. I am, as Rahab would find out, I am a promise-keeping God. They told her, this is, this is what you do. Here's how you save you and your family. Drop a red thread out the window. And I don't think it had to be a cord. I don't think it had to be a rope. I think it could be just a little small thread that hung out that window that you'd sew a button on a shirt with. Because God could see it and He could see her faith. And the family was saved. Reveals His glory and it reveals His power and it reveals who He is. Reveal to them my delivering power. Reveal to them my saving power. Reveal to them my keeping power. Reveal to them my preserving power. Reveal those things to them. Reveal that glory to them. Reveal to them who I am. Tell them that you are a people who were not a people. Tell them that you were a people who were the smallest. Tell them that He didn't pick you because there was something great about you. He didn't pick you because you had mighty armies and great kings and fortified walls and riches that no one could... He picked you so He could make something of you and bring glory to Himself. You are where you are because you serve a glorious God. And that's what Israel knew and that's what we need to know today. Who today can give counsel to God? Nobody. Nobody. Who does does God have to come to today? And say, what do you think? How am I doing? I think he's doing just fine. I think he's doing quite well. Go back to Romans chapter 11 for just a moment. And we'll look. He told him here in verse in chapter 11 there are reasons that they have not been forgotten we looked at a couple last Sunday evening if you look at what uh, Paul says in verse 1 I say then hath God forgotten his people Israel no God forbid 
For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul goes, I'm an example that he hasn't forgotten his children. He hasn't cast away Israel because if he'd cast away Israel to never be back with them again, then I wouldn't be saved. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be writing the books. I would not be where I am today had he cast off Israel. He goes on down and he talks about the remnant. The remnant. This is another indicator that God has not forgotten Israel because of the remnant. And then in these last verses here, he reveals to us that God has not forgotten his people. Revealed in his sovereignty. We looked at back in verse in chapter 9 and in chapter 10. The casting aside of Israel for a while has always been God's plan. And the complete salvation of Israel, that everybody in Israel, that every Jew that ever walked the face of the earth would come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, has never been in His plan. If that was His sovereign plan, that would have occurred. It's never been His plan. But He's always had a remnant. He's always had this remnant, this group as He told Elijah Elijah says we've all I'm alone and the Lord said no I'm sorry I've got 7,000 had about the knee to bell you're alright you're not by yourself I've got a remnant Elijah I've got people I've got folks that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. I've got folks who haven't bowed to Jezebel and to Ahab <clears throat> none of those I have a remnant I always have and I always will. I'll have, I'll have a people. I'll have a voice as long, no matter what happens uh, to us, no matter what, what persecution comes, no matter how many Christians across this world may be slaughtered, God will always have people. God will always have people to be the light of the world. He will always have people who have a candle that they can light and shed His light abroad across through a dark world. He will always have His salt. He will always have His light. He will always have His messengers. He will always have His witnesses. Even in the tribulation period, He will have the two and the 144,000 who will come to this world and they will declare Jesus Christ as King of kings and Lord of lords. God will always be saving. We know in the, in the uh, tribulation, we know that He will be saving out a people for His name. Even in the tribulation, when all of God's people are gone, he will still be in that time saving out a group of people for His name, a remnant. He will always be, He will always until the time that He comes and reigns and rules and destroys all and sets up the new heaven and earth. He will always have a name. And then from that point forward, it will only be His name and it won't be a remnant. It will be all of us who will bring glory and praise to His name. So verse 35, Or who hath first given to Him and it shall be recompensed unto Him again? Who can pick God in his debt? Verse 36. For of him, that's his creative power. Through him, that's his keeping power. And to him, that is the glory that we give to him. That everything will be to him and everything will look to him. Are all things. To whom, whom, him, who's him, God. For this marvelous plan for this great things that He has done. Verse 33, as we looked at this morning, all the depths of the riches of both the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. How dare we look at God and say, you don't know what you're doing. How dare the clay look at the potter and say, why have you made me this way? No, there's depths that we can mine and know more about our Heavenly Father and there are depths that we cannot get to because our minds will never let us get there. Will never let us mine those depths. But for Him, for of Him, and through Him, and to Him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. Folks, we lift our hearts in praise tonight for He, this one, is our King.
He is our sovereign. He is the one I learn about. He is the one we pray to. He is the one we seek intervention in this world. He is the one who can. Why do you, when you have a lost friend, why do you get on your knees before God and beg God to make an intervention into the life of your friend so they might be saved? Because you know that if God doesn't make a move in their heart, they will never come to salvation. Never. But He is the only one, the one that we can go to and we can cry out in the middle of the night and say, Lord, you know my friend who is lost. Lord, you know my child who is lost. Lord, you know my friend who is strayed from the way and wandering out in sin. You know the lost sheep that you will find. Father, you know my friend who needs Jesus. Father, you you know my brother or my sister who needs healing. We have brothers and sisters in Christ all over this world of every nation, creed, and tongue. That tonight, because they know Jesus Christ as their Savior, their lives are in danger. And we on our knees, we say, Lord, please, in your sovereign power, protect our brothers and sisters this world over. Hold them in your hand. And protect them as only you can. This is the one we call Father. May His name in our lives and from our lips and from our thoughts and our eyes and our ears and our hands and our feet and our heart, may His name be forever praised and glorified on the lips of His children. Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much. Lord, we're humbled by the fact that That, Lord, you even let us come to you and make our petitions known. But, Father, that is your promise. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Pray without ceasing. Make your petitions known unto God. Father, you tell us that because you love us, you care for us, and you can. Father, may we trust you. Because, Father, in our lives, because we've been saved, we've seen your glory. Your glory is revealed in our salvation. Your power, Lord, over sin and Satan is revealed in our lives when we say, I Know Jesus Christ is my Savior. Father, we are the ones who see your hand working in every aspect of our lives. In our jobs, in our homes, in our communities. The way you work things out in our lives, Lord. The way you open up opportunities for us to share the gospel. Father, it's only attributed to you and we can give the glory to no one else but you. For Father, even in salvation, even in evangelism. Lord, when you say, how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they believe if they don't hear? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach lest they be sent? Lest I call them to go, how will they hear? But Father, the only message we have is not of the greatness of the church. Father, not of the greatness of individuals. Father, the only message we have is the greatness of God. Father, tell about your salvation and the gift of your Son and the resurrection of your Son by your power. Father, that is the message we have. It is to go into this world and tell them about your glory and who you are. That we reveal to them and then Father you take that and you reveal it in their hearts and you use it and make that effectual and you bring them to salvation. Oh Father, how great you are. Father, I pray that we will give you in our lives 
in our thoughts and words and deeds. Lord, may we give you glory in all that we do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand tonight and sing the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Let's stand and sing this evening.